Hello everybody, this is Raleigh with another episode of From Cup to Coffee, and today we have a very special guest, Rostislav Kassar, winner of the 2022 Coffee Masters competition. Rosti, welcome. Mili, thank you much for, for having me. It's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a great honor. It's a pleasure's mine. Pleasure's mine. Oh, thank you. Thank you. So just let's start out by tell us a little bit, you know, about yourself. You know, how'd you get into uh, coffee and, you know, what have you uh, been up to these days? So uh, coffee, coffee started relatively um, early in my life. And uh, it actually happened while I was while I was studying, well, I'm 26, so you know, uh, <laughs> if I say uh, early, it's it's people like, oh, well, are you 60, 70 years old? Did you say that? But uh, you know, it was it was a thing that uh, I happened to like uh, while I was studying the School of Hospitality and Trade in Slovakia, um, and you know, we obviously had our major uh, topics that you know we as a, as a students were learning about, um, and then were then these kind of like side things, um, because obviously we spent. Most of the time, we would spend uh, either serving people or preparing uh, food in the kitchen, uh, and this was like you know the kind of thing that was that was extra. If you if you were keen, uh, you know you could get your barista course, you could get your bar, like mixology slash bartender course, you can get sommelier course, you can get carving course, and so on and so forth. Uh, and coffee was actually the one that was the most popular. You know, it's 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 this thing of. Uh, uh, you know, there's there's something new to learn. There's something you know. You obviously always see cafes and you see people making coffee because coffee in Slovakia is a um, is a very social thing. Like you would never go to a, uh, like even if I'm if I'm if I compare the cultures, for example, if what it is in in the UK compared to Slovakia, it's a very different thing. Uh, people drink coffee for different reasons. People go to cafes for different reasons. Uh, they expect different things, and uh, also the way it is sold and and, and served, it's, it's very different. Like in Slovakia, it doesn't exist. So like maybe now now it does, but you would normally come to a cafe. There's always a server. There's always barista, uh, and it works the way that you sit down and you you know there's a server who takes your order, pass it on to the barista, and they make the coffee. They bring it to you, and you pay. It's not like you you queue, you place an order, then they give you a card with number and being like oh you know your number six and mm-hmm. if you call number six you come to the council and you take your coffee and cake <laughs> uh so it was a bit it was a bit like it's it's like that uh but coffee was obviously interesting because it was very uh active like mm-hmm. uh, you know it was it was a skill you could learn as a uh, at, uh, at at school, plus if if you if your grades were good, you know um, school would give you some extra money on top of that, so it would cost you less. And you know it was a, it was a very like uh, incentive, right? We were like, you know what, if you have good grades, we'll pay half of the course. You know, so luckily I was I was uh, the grades were good, so I got some money <laughs> off. But then you know the reason the reason why they uh, wanted us to do this was that obviously. Uh, as much as some people may like it, it was a, it was a good skill you could learn. So when you would be applying for a job uh, in hospitality industry, there's an extra skill that you know that maybe someone else doesn't, and you would be prefer- preferred um, at the job interview simply. So that was that was a way of of us as kids looking at it that you know what, if you'll know this, we'll be more competent, we'll be more more capable, hence uh, employers would be um, willing to hire us over someone else maybe yeah. so uh so this was this was the approach this was the this was the rationale but then on the other hand it was you know interesting you know coffee like uh, you see coffee everywhere you always hear about coffee you see always your parents drinking coffee in the morning and you know you could have been that person who could throw them off uh, a bit uh, <laughs> and that's actually that's actually what what initially would would start to happen is that you know as soon as we were uh like graduates of this course, or like once we did the course and we passed all the exams, uh, we would go to the places where we would normally be during the during our studies. Yeah, so we would go to the restaurant we work, we would go to the hotels we work, and all of a sudden we were the guys who were teaching all the other like staff members <laughs> of how like oh this is this is not what you're meant to do, this is not how you do that, this is not how you do that. So you know we in a way. Uh, some of the kids uh, were a bit cocky about it. They were like, <laughs> you know, oh, you know, we we know how coffee how coffee is made, or like how to make coffee, because we have the course. And then you know, everybody, of course, who was a bit older, were like, 
you know what uh, you can keep your coffee knowledge and put it you know where <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you know we got a bit of a cold shower right after mm-hmm. uh, but uh, I always saw these things these like these courses as the opportunity for yourself or like you know for your for your peers that uh, once you are once you pass these exams once you do this uh, and that's what everyone was very vocal about it's not the end that's the beginning of mm-hmm. the of the entire journey and you take from this what you like and you make it your own as long as it obviously makes i mean you can do anything with that knowledge but then it's only up to you how you use it uh so that was that was also the kind of like uh, a thing where uh, you know it felt motivating it felt motivating in the sense that oh you learn something um and as you will be exposed to it, you will be progressing. You will you will get better. You will learn more. You know you adjust your the, the whole maybe viewing um, of this topic. Uh, and what happened was that uh, in Slovakia, it's very common that there are like different schools, uh, like hospitality schools, and there will be these like competitions organized for for kids. So, for example, you know uh, chefs like you know like cooks right, so they would right. they would you know they would cook a dish and they would be compared judged by like competent people and they would be winner you know they would get feedback on how they did how they performed and you know it was a it was a learning tool simply these competitions and this was this was when i was uh 16 17 um that there was a barista competition happening and one of our one of our teachers came to my classmate and they offered her to be to represent school because they were like, oh, you know what, you you seem like a competent person, you seem like a good person to represent our school um, because you have you have you know you you have will you 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 know you have everything that you you need really right and it would be a great opportunity for you and she goes like her name was Terka Teresa um, and she was like oh yeah I'll I'll, I'll do it I'll go I'll go uh, but at some point maybe like two three weeks before. She withdrew. She was like, "Oh, you know what? I, I'm not doing it. I don't. I don't remember. I don't remember the reason. But she, she told to the teacher that you know what? I can't. I can't take part for X reason. And, and the teacher came to me and, and she was like, um, her name was Anna. And Anna said, uh, Rusty, um, Terka cannot compete. Would you like to? And I said, uh, Sure. Like, no, I'm. I, I'd like to. I mean, I don't know what what I meant to do, but I'll go." You know, before I knew, because if she would tell me, maybe I would be like, ah, you know what, maybe <laughs> pick some of this. <laughs> it was a lot of things to do, actually. But she's like, oh, you make for espressos, you make for cappuccinos, we make some signature drink, that's it. Like, you know, what's what's the what's the big deal, right? And I was like, yeah, sure, let's let's go, let's do it. So we would start practicing. And, you know, it was, a, it was the time when, you know, uh, you could see someone pouring a heart into a cup and you're like, oh. You know, yeah, you were like, wow, oh, this is the, this is the most amazing, amazing thing. The, like the benchmark of quality, right? And, <laughs> and uh, all of a sudden, we go, we do the competition. We do poorly, of course. <laughs> uh, but, you know, again, uh, it was the first step. Yeah, it was and the first exposure. Exactly. And that's that's the that's the most important thing in some things sometimes. But uh, it was a bit, it was a bit, it was a bit a uh, wild west because <laughs> we were... Uh, I was initially planning to, well, with my teacher, of course, we were like, oh, you know what? Espresso is a beverage and cappuccino, that's Italian. Like, we have to be like, we have to be like, a bit, we need to bring a little bit of show to this, right? And that was me thinking like, oh, it needs to be funny. We need to entertain the people, right? And uh, she goes like, yeah, that's uh, that's an amazing idea. So what do you want to do? And I said, you know, why, why wouldn't I um, uh, pretend I am... Uh, I am a gangster, like you know, like in like in Italy, like yeah. you know, it was at that, at, mm-hmm. you know at that point, uh, people uh, kind of knew that you know what there's apparently some 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 mafia in in Italy, and you know it's uh, it's almost like a cultural thing uh, at some places. Not that I would be glamorizing it, but uh, and I say and I told her like, how about if we if we if we have a weapon on the stage, <laughs> and and she's she's like, yeah, that's amazing, that's amazing, let's do it. And I said, "You sure about this? Because I'm, I'm I, I mean it." Yeah. Uh, and she's like, "Yeah, let's let's go." I said, "Okay." <laughs> so we so we go. I asked my father for permission to 
to take the the firearm of course like you know safe like, i i could handle these things i was always of exposed blah 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 you know with with all the precautions taken mm-hmm. uh and at some point i'm at stage and i'm standing there and everybody's looking at me and you know i had this like a black head i had the rose inside oh okay because uh, okay. there was a there was a female judge so i wanted to give it to her as, at the end you know like with all the class and and uh, i could possibly yeah, have yeah. uh and so before i start i would go like time you know i start my time and i'm like you know just in case you you, you cannot decide who the winner should be i leave this here just like just FYI, FYI, you know, uh, and of course everyone found it hilarious that the entire room was laughing. So I was like, you know what? I think we're doing okay so far. Yeah. Um, you have not been terrible, of course. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but everybody That's... liked the little. Everybody liked the little flare with gun, and yeah. everybody liked, you know, uh, I heavy good rolls, and I gave it mm-hmm, to mm-hmm. to one of the judges. You know, they liked it. It was fun, yeah. Like, uh, and so we de- we do this competition. Uh, we're told it'd be terribly <laughs> but at the same time at the same time we got the trophy for the best cocktail you know it wasn't the cocktail oh, okay. i created it was the cocktail that my my teacher created so i was like you know what Anna? Uh, this belongs as to you as mm-hmm. well as to me because um, you gave me hand we worked on this together and uh at some point at some point uh she comes to me and she's like oh there's not a competition happening actually like, would you like to go? Of course, we're going. Like, uh, and out <laughs> Here of, we go out again. Of, out, yeah, out, out of nowhere, uh, this became uh, a thing. Okay. Uh, that every single time the competition was happening, um, she would come directly to me. Uh, and, you know, it just it just kind of kept on going, kept on going, kept on going. Uh, and, you know, at some point I, I left school, right? And... Uh, I have to say that this 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 style of competitions, they, this was a bit of an old school, you know. So they they kind of expected you to be making shots out of seven grams of espresso, you know. Espresso should be like this, like, like that. A very traditional. Yes, yes, framework. yes, yes. yes. Okay. In, a, in a way, like, although it was it was great learning tool. Uh, that's not. I think that nowadays it's not what the speciality is about. Because although this person who was in charge of these of these courses uh, was a SCA educator for Slovakia, uh, some of the some of the things that he was doing or he would say were a bit. Some people would would challenge the opinions, and you know he kind of was didn't really like this this being challenged. Uh, and at some point, someone told me, and actually a very uh, very I, I would say influential person on Slovakia. If we'll be listening to this, we're sending best regard to Martin Karabinos, uh, who you know is 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 the person in Slovakia that everybody knows in relation to coffee. Okay. And Martin Karabinos is a person who who opened uh, you know after after some time a roastery called the Flag Roasters. And if if I can tell you one cafe to go to if you're in Slovakia, it's the Flag. Um, coffee roasters in Banska Bistrica, uh, because Martin is a is a master in uh, in many ways um, in relation to coffee. Because you know sometimes, in my opinion, to define a master is a very difficult thing. Of course, yeah. But because because he is a very he he doesn't do things in one way. He's like you know very open minded. He you know uh, he actually from being a barista like head barista he he became a, a business owner. He became a roaster at the same time. He's managing a team of people. So you know a lot of things he put on his shoulders, but he performed like very consistently he represented slovakia in several times in like in in the, the um, world barista championship mm-hmm. so you know he's a he's a very competent person and you know and you come to the cafe and you see him behind the bar you know he's not yeah. like oh yeah i made this to be to have to exist and now i just like lay on my back and mm-hmm. and, bought, mm-hmm. and count the money no he's the person who's in the trenches with the staff and uh, you know he's the he's the ben- in my opinion Martin Karabinos is the benchmark of barista, because what happened for example when I moved to London and I was like thinking wow London that's like that's the place for coffee that's the place for cocktails I mean it right. cannot even get any better than in London right you know um, little did I know and the maybe second or third time I went to coffee shop I asked them for cascara. That was at that point very common. It's why, right? The 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 dry, uh, like the, the the fruit, the the pulp, the cherry, uh, of from the coffee tree that's dehydrated and then steeped in hot water and turned into kind of like a, a tea hot beverage. Kind of? yeah, yeah, like kind of, yeah. 
Um, and you know, I came to to coffee to coffee shop, and I was like, "Oh, do you sell this?" And the person's like, uh, "What are you asking me for?" <laughs> and I said, uh, "Cascara." And they look at me like, "What's cascara?" And you know, and I'm looking at him like, "You know what? We are fellow baristas. I know what cascara is. You don't know what cascara is. What do you mean?" And I tell him, "Oh, it's." And I explain him like, "Oh, I'm looking for this dry cherry from coffee tree that you steam in hot water." And he's like, uh, "Man, I never heard of that." And I said, uh, uh, "Wow, so we never heard of that, but you were with coffee somehow." And he's like, mm, "Yeah, okay, okay." So I went to another shop. Same story, like they don't know what cascara is, and and then I see and I out of nowhere noticed it's on the shelf, and I was like, "This is cascara. You sell cascara here, but you don't know what it is." And they're like, "Oh yeah, I mean, I you know I heard some people steeping in hot water." And you know, and then then I thought like, you know, maybe maybe I took this idea of London being supreme uh, in relation to coffee a bit a bit far to ahead. Right. And that's exactly what happened. What I realized that uh, in Slovakia, to a certain extent, there were people that were far more competent because they were so passionate that they you know they would spend a lot of time learning and reading of of these things. And whereas here it was like you know just the job right it was like you're a student at the university uh, you need some income you do coffee uh, but that's not how it works for example in Slovakia in for example uh, sorry in, in Slovakia it, it, especially if you see people like Martin that's like the occupation for life you like kind of dedicated your life to to work with this because right. you love it you love it you want to do this and it's not coffee necessarily it's maybe the idea of hospitality Yes, mm-hmm. you know, you kind of focus, your primary primarily focus is in coffee, but you do hospitality as a whole. And that's what I love about, especially about, about Martin, because, you know, the first thing you would do, you know, he's a, he's in the first place, a human being, and then he's, he's barista, you know, then you can call, you know, if you come and you see the amount of trophies he has on, on the wall, yeah, you're like, uh, <laughs> you know, taken back. Yeah. What, yeah. What, what's all this? And he goes like, Oh, these are my trophies. <laughs> but he, he never would be like, oh, look at my trophies. Yeah. Whereas, okay. whereas sometimes I feel like it's more like, uh, look at my trophies. Mm-hmm. I make coffee. Mm-hmm. Not the other way around. That you would notice that, you know what, this person's apparently good. I wonder. I'll ask him. And then he tells me about the trophies he has. Right. And that would be making sense. Because sometimes, in my opinion, people kind of jump far to a head thinking that you know what this actually means something and if you don't know what it means it's your fault no <laughs> that's not how it should be because exactly what what once happened and this is this is where i kind of again started to think of this uh martin at that point when i when i got to know him he got all these trophies he got like you know he was a vice champion of the of the world aeropress in rimini i think in 2014 uh barista here barista there latte art here latte art there so you know very like a person that knew it yeah yeah and at some point we were we were working together in, in this um in this um, cafe slash bar and uh he was explaining me this idea of like being the champion right and he at some point is talking 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 and all of a sudden he notices a person coming to bar while they were sitting mm-hmm. so he the person left the table to come to the bar and he came to him and said like, can I have a glass of water please and he went back and he tells me exactly that second, Rusty, I may be the master, but I did not see this person wanting co- water. I should have knew. I should have noticed that. Interesting. You know, and I, and really? I thought like, and I thought, wow, Martin, you, you say that you're champion, but you, you kind of, you say that it's far more important for you to see what people, what the person wants uh, because then all these titles, he doesn't know about the titles, this this person. This person doesn't know Mar- Martin's champion. And Martin told me, I may be champion to you, but I'm clearly not to this person. And that, that was exactly, that was, the, that, was the, that was the message that he was like, uh, we're making coffee, right? Like, let's, let's, all, let's all chill out. And if we have any, any titles or any trophies, let's make sure we look after the people because then we think a bit far too much of ourselves, of who we are and how we should be treated. And that's not how it, how it should work. Yes. There should be some sort of mutual respect between the guest and the bartender, barista, whoever, and vice versa. 
And that's maybe sometimes issue where, you know, people treat you the way you don't deserve to be treated, but that, you know, having title will not change their mind unless you shout the, the, the trophy in their face. So they're like, oh, oh, you know what? You must be uh, some, some sort of champion because you have a trophy. I will now treat you with more respect or something like that, you know? And, and that's, that's actually, you know, speaking of the Japanese culture, this is where it kind of links where okay. uh, if you if you look at for example the the tea ceremony as a as a whole the tea ceremony as a um, as an event um, it's not about the tea uh, it's about everything else around the people that they are meant to be aware of so for example when you come to a to a, a tea house before you come there's meant to be like a little path. It's meant to be like a little, like a little walk on the, um, on the, what's it called? Like on the, the garden. Kind of the yes, garden. yes, yes, yeah, yes, yeah. yes, correct. And and that that's that's normally where you would, for example, see stones laid. Like you know, stones would be kind of creating the 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 path, or would be like following some sort of road. And uh, what, for example, happens is that in summer, the tea master or someone who's who's helping the tea master is meant to make these rocks, these stones wet. So as you're walking towards the tea house, unconsciously you're meant to be thinking that you're cool, you're you you feel you don't feel hot because you see everything that's around wet. Interesting. And this is this is and you're not even inside the the, the actual tea tea mm-hmm. house, you no, know, the tea room. You're just before, but they like they already thinking of that of as an experience as a whole. So, for example, even if you go to these places uh, and you you're walking to the to the tea room to the place where the tea ceremony will be taking place, they tend to be a steep hill, so you cannot see the end. And it's kind it's uh-huh. meant to it's meant to make you think that you're walking somewhere, and it's it's not like it takes some some effort to to walk this hill. Uh, and it's meant to be like the 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 wow the it's about to happen now you walked it and now it will happen so it they already like kind of it's it's all meant to be stimulating before you actually do something and then you right. have your tea you have your tea that's it you know so <laughs> so uh, uh, before you have that tea there's a lot of things you're meant to notice but at the same time there are also rules for the tea master what to do as well as for the guests. Okay. And they they don't tell them, for example, you you need to know this that if you for example in the in the tea room, you are allowed only to be sitting in certain places. You can't move, you can't go here, you can't go there. There's this this is your space. Mm-hmm. This is where you move. This is where the tea master moves and you don't challenge that. You you don't do things that you're not meant to be doing. So there's a lot of respect on behalf of the guest as well as on behalf of the tea master, uh, and that's maybe something that sometimes lacks here. And that's why maybe people feel like you know they are not valued or they are not they they are not treated the way they should be. And I completely understand that because it's it's frustrating, and especially if you're exposed to this over a long period of time, that you know people just see you as some sort of coffee dispenser. That's not right. I understand that. Right. Uh, but then there are also, in my opinion, ways to not to fight it, but to. Uh, Kind of explain this to yourself, and you know, see these things from from a different perspective, uh, rather than thinking that people are doing this personally to you. Because I doubt they are. They just they are not aware of it. And you know, maybe it's the convenience of the life we live nowadays. But I feel like it's it's maybe you know, for example, if someone comes to a cafe, and I say, oh, "Good morning, how are you?" and they say, "Oh, latte." And I, I wait until they stop talking. So I ask them again, and how are you? And when, then they like, oh, sorry, sorry, uh, I'm good, thank you, and you? And I say, oh, I'm well, you know, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. And just kind of make them realize that, uh, you know, we're in a cafe, we're dealing with a living person, and as yeah. much as I as I want you to give you the best, uh, you also have play a big role in this. Uh, and if you will, for any reason, uh, feel, for example, agitated or you'll be angry, uh, 
you will pass, you may pass that energy on to me, but I don't mm-hmm. want that. You know, <laughs> I, 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 I will skip on, on that part. And instead, let me, let me turn it around. Like, of course, I understand if someone's angry and they'd be like, can I have latte? And I need it fast. I won't be trying to be funny, right? But I, I, I understand that we're people. We are essentially uh, salespeople. We are selling coffee, yeah? I know yeah, we're yeah. making coffee, but at the same time, uh, for example, if I'm if I'm working in the cafe and someone comes and says, hi, can I have a latte, please? I say, sure, of course. Would you like anything sweet on the side? And they say, no, fine, that's absolutely fine. No, here's your coffee. Another person comes and says, hi, I will have a flat bite. Sure, do you like anything else on the side? And they say, oh, what is this? What is that? And, you know, I tell them, oh, this is this pastry, this is that pastry. This is very good. I would go for this. And all of a sudden, the person goes like, yeah, you know what? I will have this uh, cinnamon pastry, whatever, Danish, something. I say, perfect. S- doing nothing, saying one sentence, I, I brought in money. Because at the end of the month, it's not the founder it's not the owner of the place who pays me it's the money of the people i sell things to yeah essentially alpha and omega uh whilst um of course it's not only i don't want it to sound like i am only about money of of course of course yeah you know what i mean but but first and foremost this is business and this business needs to survive today so i can operate tomorrow and whilst it's something, coffee is something I love, I, I understand where uh, my responsibilities are within, within the, the cafe as a, as a barista, within, uh, as a professional. But at the same time, I understand that uh, it's vital for me to be selling things. <laughs> because uh, that's, that's what it is based on. And as much as I like coffee, I will not be... Uh, I will not kind of try to teach people the way they don't feel comfortable with, right? So as soon as someone comes to, to the cafe, to Four Boroughs, where I work in Crystal Palace, someone comes and says, may I have Americano? And I say, oh, you know what? By the way, we have uh, also filtered coffee. We have batch brew uh, that's actually cheaper that I would say you may enjoy a bit more uh, at the times. Like if you if you like espresso-based coffee, there's nothing wrong with that. Mm-hmm. I just wanted to like let you know because breaking habits sometimes doesn't feel good, but if the change is positive, it feels amazing. Exactly. Right. So I tell them, you know what? Don't have this. Have that. I give them coffee, uh, and you would be you would be surprised. But so many times happen that I would get one batch, like you know, I would make a batch mm-hmm. boost, so say like one point three liters, and there would be six people in the cafe sitting all at the table, and I would come to one person. And I would like refill them because they asked previously. And then I come to another person and I say, oh, would you like some more coffee? And they say, oh, I liked what you said to the other table. What is that? You know, and all of a sudden they, mm-hmm. they're interested, they're intrigued, they're curious. And I say, oh, oh it's filled of coffee. It comes from this, you know, a rare variety of coffee. Tastes like this, tastes like that. You know what? I will have some. I get them cup, I bring mm-hmm. it, and then I come to another table, and same story. Same thing. Can I have oh, one too? Okay. And it, this happened several times that mm-hmm. I would go to one table and I would sell inside a batch in the instance of four minutes, like inside a batch con. Mm-hmm. And I was like, all of a sudden, six very happy people, because they were also entertained by the end. I came to the last person because they could see that everyone got the same coffee. Right. I was like, guys, how's the coffee? And everyone was like, man, that's that's very good, that's tasty, that's delicious. Uh, you know, and at that point, I feel like uh, that's amazing. Like, uh, you know, I feel good. They feel good. We feel all good. The energy in this room is, is amazing. You know, we we are selling amazing product to, to lovely people that come tomorrow. First thing they ask, you have the same coffee you had yesterday? Of course we do. You know, palm, you know, and, and I understand that. A lot of this is down to what's the nature of the business because you, I, I understand that you know same thing cannot be expected somewhere in central London, where you really make like thousand plus cups of coffee a day, compared to I don't know maybe two hundred. Yeah, that's a very different. That's a very different setting. So I understand that, but uh, I feel like 
as if we don't have anything to compare these individual experiences, uh, we may be a bit frustrated. We, we, we may feel like, oh, you know what, maybe there's something wrong. And then we see, and you know, coincidentally very often, that we see people doing coffee because they need income. And then you ask them, and, and you know what, <laughs> do you actually like this job? They're like, nah, not really. And, and for me, uh, and for my partner, who we constantly we work together at the same, the same cafe, the same coffee shop, uh, we like, uh, that's a bit odd. Like, why do you do that then? Yeah. Why like, do you do something do... you don't enjoy? Yeah, There's so exactly. many things you exactly. could do to make income. Exactly. And uh, they're like, oh, you know, it's convenient. It's easy. It's like uh, this. It's like that. And I say, uh, I'm not sure if it's if it's uh, like, obviously, I'm not preaching. Mm, but, you know, I feel I'm, I'm thinking in my head, like, maybe that's not the thing you should be doing, because there may be someone else really who, who really wants to be doing this because they like it for whatever reason. Yeah. Uh, and you are not helping someone get that job. Uh, and you, and you know, whilst at the same time, you don't care. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, <laughs> it's almost the opposite of what you said and how you talk to people and how you kind of build as you, the word that comes to mind is community, right? You're kind of building this community in your coffee shop with having everyone try the same coffee in this, but it's almost the opposite, right? They're not going to really be building that sense of community, but breaking it down, just walking in, you know, hello, how are you? A conversation, but latte, here you go gone i mean that's that's kind of what it's a negative reinforcement so to speak exactly and you know it's it's sometimes you know and that's that's sometimes the frustrating thing mm -hmm. where you know you have very you have very like uh mm, very strict uh working ethics that yeah. you know for example this is a rule of thumb like you never touch cup in like with your fingers inside of the cup, of right? That's yes. like that's that's the name. That's like something you don't do because you know that they will go to in someone's coffee that they will then sip from. I'm not saying there's like uh you know you obviously don't have I don't know mud on your hands that would mm -hmm. go into that cup, but you know it just doesn't feel nice. Like and you know I remember having this conversation with one of uh, one of person before I said imagine you are in their shoes like you see that someone did that how does that make you feel? And the person goes like, it's disgusting. Yeah. Said, exactly. Yeah. So why, exactly. why, why would you do the same thing to someone else? If you find it yourself disgusting, uh, that doesn't make sense. Does it? And all of a sudden, yeah, that doesn't make sense. Never again, <laughs> you know, and it, you know, all of a sudden the person stopped doing that. And I said, you know what? Um, as once, um, my ex colleague Edgar Azushka said, you know what? This is what one person told me. You only use the handle. That is that is shared uh, yeah. between between guests and the barista. You don't touch anything else. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was like, yeah, that makes that makes sense. Like you know, as long as obviously your hands are are as as far uh, from the from the the rim of the of the cup. Uh, if you're holding it by the bottom, absolutely fine. But you know, uh, obviously never your hands inside, right? Uh, and you know, there's like X, X, Y, Z amount of these examples that you know sometimes people do for for like not even realizing it maybe, uh, but I feel like especially sometimes in my position with you know with the title and and things like this, uh, these things become a bit of a I'm walking on thin ice because at the same time I I don't want to uh, to to sound to someone like uh, uh, that I'm patronizing them or. You know, well, I am, course, I am, yeah. I am mocking what they're doing, right? That's that. Of course, no. But at the same time, I tell them, look, I was in this situation myself. Someone must have told me, mm -hmm. and now I'm just passing on the message. It's not me personally telling you now anything. It's the person who told the person that told the person that told me, and it makes sense. We we follow some sort of like a you know a pattern. It's like a chain reaction, right? I, yeah. I get told. I tell you because of this and that, and you know not because I want, but because it makes sense. That's that's something I like in this industry is that there's a lot of if you can use your common sense, mm -hmm. a lot of things uh, maybe people wouldn't be doing. You know, yeah. some some people maybe do, some some things sometimes people do because it's a sort of habit, right? It's the way you've been doing, it. and there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, as long as you can 
justify what you do and why. And if you cannot tell me and you cannot, not to me, but if you cannot tell to the broader industry why what you're doing uh, is significant. Mm -hmm. uh, why are you doing it? Exactly. Like, you know, you have no, you have no backing up for, mm -hmm. for this argument, essentially. Um, so, yes. Yeah, no. <laughs> Back to I, the question. Uh, no. <laughs> so, I, uh, yeah. I think that, that, that about covers it, I, I would say, a little bit. Um, but no, that, that makes a complete sense um, to me. I mean, it's it, right. And what you said, it's not that, you know, you're judging or that anything like no, that. No, no, of really, course not. Yeah, you're just, you know, this, it, it's the stone, the, the you know, the, the stone in the water creating the ripples. Someone started it and those ripples carry over different coffee shops and, um, and experiences. And, and, you know, for example, at the same time, I, I like when people challenge my my opinions of course and not no, and they are not like opinions i created mm -hmm. i don't want i don't want someone to think that those are things that you know pre people i've i managed to work with people i've encountered that will tell me rusty if we do things we do them only right way end yeah. of the story no questions yeah. because then exactly that doesn't leave any room for mistakes right mm -hmm. i understand that you know sometimes it may be difficult, especially if it's a habit, because breaking habit, as I said earlier, uh, may be a great thing as long as it's pleasant. But telling someone, don't do this, it's, it's not difficult. like, you know, yeah, it's it's not like it clicks and, you know, you're not doing it. No, you will still do it. Like, mm -hmm. you know, because it's, it's, um, it's, it's a force of habit. habit. Right? So, We're creatures so, of habit, yes. Exactly. So I even tell to, to, to people like, uh, you'll do it again, probably. Uh, as well as I will do something that someone needs to tell me off. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that, obviously, as long as it's communicated properly. But I feel like that sometimes people have the tendency to take these things personally. Internally, yeah. Yes, it's like, like as, if, as if I'm telling you, like, to your personality, your existence, that you do something wrong. No, no, no. <laughs> it's uh, we as a team are here to deliver something on day-to-day -day basis. This job is very difficult and demanding. So like, let's not think it's easy to be to be barista or to work behind the bar. Those things are very demanding. Uh, and not, not as, as well as physically, they're mentally demanding. They may be draining at the times. And, you know, performing uh, under pressure, uh, you know, when someone says, yes, I am capable of performing under pressure, uh, I know they say this for a reason. I'm sure that some people uh, perform better, some people worse. I'm the worst person to perform under pressure at, at, at times. Uh, but, you know, it's it's something that you can obviously build up, you can improve. And, you know, as long as you're in control, you're never really stressed, right? It's, the, it's in my opinion, it's, the, it's knowing that you're in control that makes you powerful in this. Because as soon as you lose that control and things are, you are not aware of things that are happening around you, that's, that's why things will become stressful eventually. But, you know, for, for, for that, there's obviously, you know, plenty of, like training, but at the, at the same time, uh, the more you do it, the better you'll become, if you want, of course if you want because i i even like i've seen some people who tell me oh, i've been doing this for x x x years or something uh but then you see these like basic things that you would say um, i i would i would not do that i would not do this uh i'm, I'm sure plenty other people wouldn't uh so you're telling me you do this for x years uh doesn't really it doesn't do the justice because uh you know there are clearly things but you know i feel like that's also a cultural thing because you know people i sometimes feel like oh you're making coffee what's the big deal well it's not a big deal but you need to realize how many hours that person put into being able uh, you know to be pulling shots to of be course. steaming the milk to be pouring the nice patterns mm -hmm. and you know uh such a simple thing like uh you know doing dishes uh you know yeah. that's also a thing that you know is uh is very simple in its in its in its theory uh and it's in its nature uh but if you are if you are messy at doing that and you like spraying water everywhere or you're making you know 
you're making a lot of noise, for example, when you're cleaning the dishes. That's also not very helpful, especially if the cafe is small, because everybody can hear that annoying yeah. no- <laughs> noise of you like tapping something mm-hmm. in, like ceramic against um, saucer or something. And you know, I'm thinking, well, if you know, if it's that simple, teach me. You clearly know more than I do, so please enlighten me with with all your knowledge. That's exactly that's exactly something that I, when I was reading the um, the book of tea from Kakuzo Okakura, that was actually the moment when someone told one of the tea masters that, man, you're making tea. What's the big deal? And this person goes, oh, if you know so much, then you can be, be become my teacher. You know, of course, uh, ironically, but that person all of a sudden realized that, oh. Maybe I shouldn't have said that because uh, do I really know more than this person in front of me? I don't think so. And there's nothing wrong with you. Like, you know, of course, I understand people have opinions, but uh, at the same time, it's very important to to read the situation sometimes. Yeah. I, you know. Uh, yeah, I was going to say like, oh, sorry. I don't mean to interrupt you, but I completely no, no, agree. My favorite saying is the more we learn, the more we realize how much we don't know. Correct. Correct. And exactly. when someone when someone comes to me and they're like, "Can you teach me coffee?" I'm like, <laughs> "Of course, of course, I can." But how serious are you? Yeah. Because I will not waste one minute of I don't know x x amount of years mm-hmm. of of trying to figure some things, reading this, uh, looking for that reference, asking this person, watching this video on YouTube. Uh, for someone who wants to be pouring latte art, like who wants yeah. to be pouring nice pets and in coffee, I can like I will happily go with you through through the individual steps to what to my best knowledge. But you know, why do you want it in the first place? Do you yeah. really want to learn, or do you just want to you know take a picture so you can post it on Instagram and people are like, oh, oh look at look at your look amazing at, yeah. hearts. No, no, there's not. There's nothing wrong with that. Absolutely, of course not. Of course, you know yeah. what I mean. But mm-hmm. if you want to learn latte art, get yourself a latte art uh, course. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Don't come mm-hmm. to cafe expecting that the cafe staff will teach you, and then you take it. In three weeks' time, you'll be gone. Work in different cafe where they offered you more money. Yeah. Or something like that. You know. Yeah. Uh, so I think, I think the big thing that, and kind of what I'm understanding from our conversation is, is curiosity. A good barista, a good you know, person who's involved in the coffee world has to be curious. They can't just accept things for how they are or just say, I just want to learn this because of X, Y, Z. I mean, it's what you said about too. Everything that you do, you have to be able to say, well, this is why I do it. If Are you not curious as to why, you know, we do X, Y, Z or why we use 18 grams or seven grams or this or that? And I think that's just a very important quality to have. Um, and it's, it's difficult to, like, I love Colin Hartman. I read his book recently and he yeah he talks about you know i would rather hire instead of someone who has been making you know espressos all their life but they're like well i'm not going to do the dishes i'm not going to do this i have these awards he'd rather hire someone with curiosity to teach because you can't teach curiosity but you can teach someone how to you know how to make coffee and and get into that coffee industry and world and that's that's also like you know you touching the touching on on the point of trophy. That's exactly a thing that you know I I for example am very sober about because uh, you know you would see some people that would get trophies that would you know they would be awarded um, this and that and then we put like labels on their face or like this is this this is winner of that this is winner of that. Uh, but then exactly. Uh, uh, it gets to the point where you meant to be, for example, working with the person like this, and you can't rely on their on their like uh, washing up skills because you know, or like for example, I tell you, I tell you a perfect example. Uh, shortly after the coffee masters, uh, a friend of mine comes to the cafe, uh, and I'm talking to him. I left the bar and I went to talk to him, uh, and I'm talking, 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 and all of a sudden I hear uh, the steaming wand like not stopping. I could hear that a lot of like milk splashed. I could hear a big like something. And I look at my colleague and he, I can see him trying to close the 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 steaming one, the, the knob, but it, it closed, but it didn't close the valve. And I was like, uh, man, something's up. And he's like, 
doesn't stop. So I, I, you know, first thing, jump behind the bar, turn off the machine, try to see what's what's the deal. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. You know what? I took it apart. All of a sudden, I I take the whole steaming one, the, the whole unit out in like instance of I don't know five ten minutes because I was trying to to um, to get to talk to my friend who lives nearby to kind of come and have a look. Uh, and you know he's not he's not he's not answering the phone. You know what, Rusty? You need to do this yourself. So I come behind the bar, I open the the Lamarza Colina PB, and I look at it and I say, oh, you know what? This looks like there's some thread. Maybe I could twist this. You know what? I took it apart. All of a sudden, I swapped the one group with another, and it was working. Hmm. Okay. You no, know, put it together. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Be, and and be be like, you know, um, trading again. And out of nowhere, I'm I'm thinking like. And this person, this friend of mine, actually is like, uh, oh, coffee master. And I said, yeah, coffee master. Uh, funny, you would never think that you would be exposed to a situation like that. You know, in the moment mm-hmm. where maybe uh, you should know what to do, you didn't. Uh, I didn't. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, there was the room of me to try to do something because... You know, if someone would be like, hey, coffee master, how's the machine? Bro- is it broken or is it working? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, uh, I was, I was, I was kind of feeling. I would feel guilty uh, if I have these awards and I have all these like, oh, uh, coffee master and vice coffee master, and you cannot even fix a wound. You know. Yeah. Now, now I'm thinking like, if this would happen like any time again, I know exactly what to do, and I understand that you know these situations happen, and they, we are not in control of them. But in my opinion, it's 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 also about the the ability to be exposed to unknown and, you know, like challenge yourself on day-to-day basis. I'm not saying that you have to be always like giving yourself big things to do, right? but uh, don't shy away from, you know, the opportunity. Exactly. Like, so. you know, what does it mean to be the coffee master to someone? Well, does it mm-hmm. mean that this person makes the best coffee or is he what the best at serving people or, uh, you know, what, are, because there is no, in my opinion, because there is no, uh, what's the word? You cannot define that. Mm-hmm. Uh, you need to prove it. You need to you need to be showing that uh, anything that's related to this, you're capable of doing. If someone right. comes to the to the to the to our cafe um, and asks me, uh, I don't know, uh, a question about um, why do we have the bike? Because we, mm, the founders of Four Boroughs are keen cyclists, and we have a bike oh, okay. uh, that's like, uh, you know, as a part of the display. And if would someone would come and be like, "Why is this bike here?" If I could not answer that question, uh, I'm not saying that that doesn't mean that I'm a coffee. Yeah, you know, I will have this label on my face now, but it's more important of I am contributing to the place with my with my skill set, but with my personality essentially like i am a you know i am meant to be person that suits into the place not uh, a kind of place that suits me because uh we obviously we are changing as professionals right from maybe one day to another i decide doing things differently as long as i have good reason for doing them i am entitled to do those changes and in my opinion it's also about the ability to do that because if if I if I can be in a certain way, as you said, you know, if there's someone who's been putting espresso shots for the last 20 years every single day, Colin Hanman would not hire this person and he rather wants someone who's curious, who's into food, who's into I don't know what, for a reason, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, and in my opinion, you know, this industry is fairly young industry. There's a lot of changes that are happening. There are, you know, new approaches to making things that are new ideas of how we should be looking at the whole, at, you know, certain topics. Uh, and in my, I, in my opinion, it's also uh, the ability to t- critically assess and evaluate yourself as an individual without the idea of any ego existing that mm-hmm. you can like honestly tell to yourself, like Rusty, this wasn't good. Rusty, that wasn't good. You need to improve this and so on and so forth. Uh, I remember actually once, my ex-boss, Eric Lorenz, while he was working in the Connaught bar, uh, he remembers a barbeck that always wanted to be a bartender, 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 bartender. He would always be asking uh, them, like, oh, can I be behind the bar? Can I go behind the bar today and work? And they're like, you know what? We'll give you 
a chance because mm-hmm. you've been bragging, you've been annoying. We'll give you a go, okay? Yeah. They gave him a go. First person that sits at the bar comes to this person and goes like, what red wines do you have? And he goes like, uh, Eric, uh, what red wines do we have? And he's like, man, you're behind the bar. You wanted to be here. Yeah. You tell them. And he's like, but I don't know. <laughs> Maybe you shouldn't be here then. Mm-hmm. And then then he he was like, you know, with tears about to burst from his eyes because he was he was told that this is the one chance we'll give you. You have the chance to do everything you want here. You'll be you'll be treated the way everyone will be treated, and you blew it. And 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 then when they told him, it's not time, it's not time, your time will come, your time will come. Be patient, learn, 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 and don't don't think that you know. You'll be on the on the pictures and you'll be on the Insta stories and in and Instagram posts of other people saying how amazing you are. Because in the first place, you need to be told how bad you are in what you're doing, where what you lack as a professional, as a person, to work on that. And that's what the team is about. If someone comes to me, or if someone would came to me in 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 the past and would tell me, Rusty, you know what? I think you're doing this wrong or that wrong. You know, at the end, we shook our hands. We 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 hugged each other. Of course, because I knew that that person has no bad intention, and just because they are telling me, we as a team are are helping and we're supporting each other. So that's maybe sometimes the thing that people do not take into consideration that working in hospitality is a teamwork, uh, right? It's a, it's it's a, it's a team of people with unique set of skills because. Nobody is perfect. I I cannot do everything. I need some other people I can rely on when when doing this. When yes, I can do this and that, but then there are also plenty of things I cannot do, and I myself need to learn them. Uh, but I don't want to have this like, you know, I don't want to have this like uh, opinion view on on like, oh, I'm the greatest. I'm the greatest, and you know, I don't need you. I don't, no, I need every single person around me because what I am now. It's because of their input. It's because of their time. It's because of their effort. So if someone comes to me nowadays or like even before and, and comes, Rusty, I need help with this and that. Of course, I'll help you. And and sometimes I remember someone asked me, oh, why do you help all these people? And I said, when I needed help, there were people I asked for help and they helped me. I need to give this back. Like, as, same as we said before, if someone told me because someone told them and, and you know, and it goes on and on, I am only passing a message of belief. Working in hospitality, in my opinion, is about belief. Yes, you can be amazing chef, you can be amazing bartender, but if you will, you know, not be able to read what people want, why they are there, and you will only be kind of drunk on how amazing you are, uh, eventually you will you will fall. And, you know, the the more pride and, like, the more of this vision of yourself you'll have, the harder the, the falling will be, and you will hurt yourself be badly. To, you know, and I remember this this once uh, in the book called The Paparazzi Bar Book that was written by Stanislav Vadana, a very influential person, uh, uh, a person I, I really admire in, like, what he does. He, he's, a, he's a person who kind of brought the idea of Japanese bartending into the like into the rest of the world, into the Europe. So at okay. some point, a, a lot of a, a lot of bartenders were like, oh, you know, Japan, look at Japanese bartenders, look at their tools, look at how they shake, look at how they're dressed, and so on and so forth. And we took this as a, as a benchmark. We were like, you know what? This is this is the this is the the greatest. This is the best we can we can learn from. You know what? All this is based on tea ceremony. All the all the idea behind bartending in Japan is based mm-hmm. on this because it's a it's it's kind of like a, a cultural setting. It's it's something that a lot of industries are around, like bartending, you see cooks, you see, for example, even people who are making knives in, uh, in Japan, you know, they are masters. Because if you go to Japan and you go to Ginza, to Tokyo, you will find these bars that are, they've been open for maybe 60 years. And mm-hmm. then you see a person behind the bar who's clearly 80, and you ask this person, who are you? And they say, oh, I'm the owner. I say, you're the owner. And you're, what, like 80 years old? And he's like, yeah, I've been working in this bar for the last 75, 70 years yeah, or 60 yeah. years every single day, you know? And then you then you, then you, you question yourself and you're like, 
oh, was I really angry today that someone said that my coffee wasn't hot enough or something, you know, over, <laughs> over a thing like that? Yeah. <laughs> You're winning. You, you are, we are putting ourselves into, I understand that it's not the same setting in, in, that's in Japan than, than here. Mm-hmm. Because in Japan, you know, um, the bars are fairly small. There may be like 10 seats uh, in the entire bar. So, you know, sometimes maybe that person serves only 10 people, but yes, they'll spend their six hours maybe. You know, so it's 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 a very different it's it's a very different scenario. But what I want to say is that you know that person that 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 fa- founder of of the, of that place will be their day to day base. If there's someone who came to of him being like, you know what, I admire what you do. I would like to be like you. And they say, yeah. Well, then you'll be polishing glasses for years. How about that? And he says, yeah, I'll do that. It's like, okay, you can come. Yeah. <laughs> You know, and if you exactly if you, you know, you see these things and you hear these stories like regularly from Japan, it's not like something new. I understand it's very demanding and I understand it's very difficult. uh, But in my opinion, there needs to be something greater than to what we believe this is all about. Right? Yeah. And if I am meant to think of Absolutely. it, it's hospitality. Hospitality is the part. It's the mm-hmm. idea of serving people. I even remember once writing uh, an essay on our English lesson about something. I don't remember about what, but I remember the sentence. I was born to serve people is what I wrote in one in, in like instance of like in some text. And when I thought of it like back, backwards, I was like, oh, I really said that the... Uh, did I mean it? Yeah, I meant it. I meant it. And I, and you know, I never had doubts about hospitality. And, you know, I always said that this is a very demanding, it's a very difficult industry to work at because you see a lot of weird things happening. Say if it's kitchen, say if it's bar, you know, there are some, some really like things can go very badly for some, some people. And, you know, I understand that at the same time, it's also maybe fault of the industry. So, you know, there are obviously steps being taken because people are becoming aware of this and there's 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 need for, for something to be changed. What it is at this point, I cannot say. So what I know is that hospitality is something I love. Hospitality is something I believe in mm-hmm. because I could not be doing this for any other reason than belief. That's why when I wake up every day at, at I don't know, half past five, brushing my teeth, I know I will go to cafe, making coffee, serving people. I know that yeah. roughly who will come to that cafe, what they will order. How can I make that special for them? Mm-hmm. How do I, am I just barista? Or will they call me by my name? You know, that's a very important thing, for example. And just because we we are not able to, to, to realize or someone doesn't tell us doesn't mean that that's what what that's like that's the standard no that's not right, the standard right, it's it's also it's also up to us what we make uh, from this industry and ultimately what we give to the industry because yes. it's amazing to be given all these like you know all the fancy labels then you know sign a contract here do one advertisement for one million pounds and we're set yeah like you know job done no uh that's that's something that uh, that's not the purpose. That's not why we are meant to be doing this, right? Um, and if we and if we look at it like uh, we are making this this world better, in the sense that if someone comes to the cafe and I know they had they had bad day, uh, and let's say it's it's just morning, just the morning, yeah, and that person had had really bad morning, for example. Uh, gets their coffee. I ask how the, how how they are. They say, oh, they don't feel like that or like this. Fine, you know what? Have coffee on the house. Like <laughs> one coffee, whether I sell or not, will not make such a big difference. But to you, it may make be such a huge thing that you will all of a sudden maybe even forget of what happened, and you will just see the 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 little gesture I did, and you feel like oh. You know what? There's actually maybe someone who cares of what I think and how I feel, and this person clearly saw at me that something's not right, and he did what he maybe could within what was within his powers, and he gave me he gave me coffee on the house, and you know maybe it wasn't a great start of the day, but it doesn't mean it has to be a great day for the rest of the day. You no, know, maybe 
uh, you know, we're humans. We there's we're, we're all about interaction. Mm-hmm. And in my opinion, uh, the skill of barista is to be able to to serve people, to see what the people are after, what they what they like, and uh, uh, be able to read the situations individually. Not being like, oh, everybody treats baristas like this or like that. Uh, well, yes and no. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, I can, yeah. I can, I can tell you why yes and why no because these are the things that I came across. And I have to tell you, I I worked in some very fancy places, and uh, you know, people treated me worse. You know, so don't yep. don't feel like you're you're a victim. I understand that things may be very first. I was frustrated myself at times, like mm-hmm. very badly. That you know, um, my partner wasn't sure what's up with me and. You know, she was trying to help and, you know, my family tried to help because I understand it. It's difficult. But if people don't ask for help, sometimes it may be difficult to understand that, you know what, there is something up. We don't know why. You need to tell me. Yeah. My my, fa- my father would always say that uh, uh, if there's a mother of, of a kid that cannot speak, she cannot understand the kid because it doesn't say anything. And it's it's difficult to to help someone if I don't know because I cannot necessarily always put myself into your shoes and see what's going behind the life as a as a barista or bartender or hospitality of course, stuff. Of course. You know, and there may be a lot of things that are happening. So uh you know, talking about these things, in my opinion, is very is a very important and crucial thing because as I said, we are team. If you know, and the team, it's like the chain. The chain is only as strong as the the weakest. The weakest mm, yes, and if 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 you are not feeling right or you don't, you're not sure about something that can be detrimental to how we perform. And if you're meant to perform well, everybody has to be performing to to a certain standard. And if I know that your skill set allows me to rely on you in relation to this and that. Perfect. Because there's someone else that I can rely on this. There's me. I can rely on myself in this and this. And together, we are a living organism that 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 moves, that lives, that adapts, that, that changes mm-hmm. as the flow tells us. You know, it's a be water, my friend, right? Like like Bruce Lee said, there are <laughs> things that you you kind of need to take in a certain way, but then it's up to you how you deal with it. Either you let these things go and you let them, you know, mm-hmm. you you go with the flow. It's right. Yeah. Yep. Um, wow. Yes. I mean, I have to. I have to say, just on a personal note, when we had this, this original conversation that we we're gonna sit down, you know, over Zoom and have a conversation about you and about, um, you know, you know, I was so excited to have a guest like you because in my, you know, and I'll say, admittedly, it's because, look, Rosty's has made a great impact. I've heard he's humble, but also he's one, you know. XYZ award and I really thought in my mind, you know, asking thinking of questions to ask you, you know, you know, what about the coffee masters competition? What about this? What about that? But really you it's really just a reinforcement of what I've heard about you and that, you know, I you know, you're talking about ego, right? You're talking about there's not really a lot of room for ego because from what I understand Once your ego builds up to a certain point, hospitality and your hospitality that you offer to your customers and in your community starts to fail and starts to kind of break down a little bit. And I just want to say, I think that's very admirable. I mean, that is um, very, very reassuring for me that, you know, people in these in these competitions and people take the competitions out of the play, but people who are making strides and will be, let's say, the future of coffee, a specialty coffee, the third wave of coffee in the next 10, 20, 30 years, um, are curious. You know, they don't, they're not letting their ego swallow them up. They're getting excited about learning something new. I mean, I can tell you a hundred people that with your kind of, um, success, if, you know, the steam want, as you said, in the espresso machine broke down, you, they would not be interested in trying to fix it. They would say that's above me, you know, and I don't think there's a lot of room in in this hospitality setting under this umbrella of hospitality for that because it's what you said um you're you know you didn't necessarily say exactly this but it's so much more than just serving someone a cup of coffee in the morning i mean the way you look at people as people and as holistic people i think is a very very interesting 
viewpoint and also i think the right way to think about it is you know same thing with the, the japanese um you know the tea ceremony it's not you know at the end of the day you can just serve tea and be like here's your tea have a good day it's not about that it's about the experience and that's really what makes the difference to the person on their um it's um one way one way i also like to put hospitality or the idea of serving mm-hmm. it's it's not tangible yeah right you you course. cannot touch it right so so there needs to be something more than just that because mm-hmm. as you said here's your cup of coffee bye you know that's not why people are there because there are thousands of coffee shops why i kind to come to this one you know there needs to be something beyond just the idea of of getting the coffee you know and very often i would i would hang outside of the cafe when when like you know the morning is a bit slow and and no one no one came to the cafe yet i walk on the street mm-hmm. and i'm looking on one side or another if i see uh, a regular guest uh, and as soon as i see them i either tell my colleague or i'll go behind a bar myself to start making coffee so before they pay coffee's there you know yeah exactly i mean sitting, hoping that they will not change their order because you know there are some people that in instance of, of one year i made um flat white maybe uh 450 times uh-huh. why would they be, why would they change <laughs> yeah, it why? <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah they, they may and there's nothing wrong with that but mm. you know i am i'm hoping that they will not so i will make it before they pay if your coffee bye yeah and you know it there's just something electric in the air mm-hmm. where you can kind of almost sense that you know this person now values your service they they value it a lot. Yes, I know it's 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 two pounds ninety they paid for it, but they know it. This is not worth two pounds ninety. Yeah, this is worth the, every single time they came here they paid. They got to you 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 got to know each other so well that you can read this in between lines. As I said, it's not tangible. You can feel it. It's it's there, uh, and they tell you they're not telling you. But you can feel it, and they can feel it that you know uh, you wanted to do something more than just make the coffee. But you know that they will come. Of course, they don't want to. Uh, you know, it's 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 a lovely feeling when you know that there's someone. It's like you know when when you were sick as a kid, and your mm-hmm. mom would would make you soup or something. Like <laughs> it was it was the feeling of like, oh, thank God. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, you didn't ask her, but she knew you will need it, mm-hmm. and she did it, and then you feel amazing after wow. you ate the soup, yeah. right? And that's exactly the feeling. We are like that's actually maybe more relevant to bar, but bar is a nursery for adults, where we let them <laughs> behave certain way, and then uh-huh. if they break rules, we tell them that uh, you, you know what, you maybe are intoxicated and you mm-hmm. cannot be served more alcohol because you can hurt yourself yeah. if you walk in the stairs. And if you break your, I don't know, your head or your arm, you, you can sue me and I can lose the license of serving alcohol to people. Yeah. And that's yeah. not cool. So as, as much as I don't want you to get hurt, I don't want, you know, uh, lose the ability to be doing what I like. So, mm-hmm. You know, let's respect that on both ends. Um, so, you know, I feel like it's very, it's very important that it's you kind of set uh, boundaries within, like, okay, this is this is cool, and beyond this, this is not. And here is when I am in charge. You're in charge here, but I overlook everything you do in the sense that. Uh, if you would be, if you would start behaving inappropriately, you will be told that you know this is not cool, X Y, you know, uh, and it's this kind of like a, a relationship that you can that you can create with people uh, that's non invasive and it feels natural. It feels like you know it's just like a regular day. If I happen to see you ten times a week, I get to notice what you look like, what you wear uh how you for example ask for coffee how would you like to pay what do you say what do you do what's your name and i got to know you all of a sudden i know what your name is what your occupation is where you live and when what days you work from home what days you work in the office and i know you so well kind of that uh 
If something's wrong, if something's out of order, I will notice. And if I notice, then it's up to me then asking you, you know, is, is everything okay? Is, is, is this going well? Is this not going well? Or uh, what's up? You can tell this is safe place. This is where we look after people. We look after your well-being. In Japan, when you are served uh, matcha, you mm. are not served tea. You are served something that contains antioxidants because the person truly looks after your health. They are giving you health potion because they mean you well-being. That's the idea of 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 someone give, giving you a gift like that. Yeah. Uh, and same we do here. Yes, I know it's a bit of a different story. I mean, I'm sure that coffee helps a lot of people in the morning because, you know, I believe people are addicted by now. Uh, <laughs> and, you know, we're the local dealers, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, but but uh, I am aware of this. You know, and uh, if, you know, if if at any point someone would come to me on a busy shift being like, Rusty, I know you're busy. I need to tell you something. I go because I'm sure that the person means something. They, they, they really need to ask me. And then what I wanted to say uh, on top of this, uh, we'll be competing in October at the Coffee Masters in New York. I will go and defend the title of Coffee Master from London. Uh, and obviously the trip is expensive, right? To go to New York for two people, course, five yeah. nights and flights and so on and so forth. We set up like a little GoFundMe thing. And out of nowhere, all mm -hmm. these people donating money. Really? Supporting us. Like, you know what, Rusty? Here's 20 pounds. Here's 10 pounds. Here's 100 pounds. There was a person who came on the shift, uh, like when I was working. And they, they could see the little poster we made. My, my fiance made and he's like oh you're going to, to new york I said yeah we're going to new york to compete and he's like man and what is this for i said oh it's like for funding because you know it's very expensive and we are trying to kind of split the cover you know and if 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 anybody can and wants they are you know welcome to to help us um and we're hoping to bring the trophy for them not for me for for the people for, yeah. that donated that supported us on this way and out of nowhere, this person's like, you know what? Here's 100 pounds. And wow. I say, 100 pounds? You, you, you sure? That's a lot of money, 100 pounds. And he's like, Rusty, you're doing, you're doing something you like. Mm -hmm. You're doing with the passion. I can see that passion. I can see the energy you translate on me when I come. When we get to talk, I want to do this. I, I want to help you. And I'm like, Nazar, you know what? Come here, hug me. You know, we hugged each other. I was, <laughs> I was, I was nearly, I was in, I was in tears. I mm -hmm. was like, uh, you know what? I can't even believe that the amount from the regular guest of the support uh, from our regular guest was so great that I am winner already. Yeah. Because there are these people around us that want to see us succeeding. They want to, they want to help us. To, to do this because they see that we do it for different we're not doing it for the for the titles we're not doing it for the uh prize uh you know they're doing it because they believe in it and as i said in previously this industry is about believing in something greater and in my opinion it's the idea of of serving people uh not just the guests but also guests serving the staff at the end of the day uh, because without their money, I am not eating. If they don't come, I will not have salary. It's not. It's not money of the of the the founders of the cafe. It's the money that the guest leaves there. So, the money they pay is my salary. If they will not pay that coffee, I'm not having salary. <laughs> so, as much as they kind of, I don't want to say depend in a negative way, but as much as they depend on coming to us on day to day basis. I and the place depends on them. So again, it's this mutual relationship that links into what I was saying earlier in relation to guest, host, and host to guest. Wow. It's one circle. And yeah. you know, you can't you can't possibly exist without that, in my mm. opinion. Unless there's a lot of funding from somewhere. But... <laughs> of course, yeah, it's a it's a symbiosis, so to speak, right? Yes, yeah. yes. Yes. I'm, I'm always going to go back to the science, the science terms, but no, no, no. science, science is is is, yeah. is welcome in, in these circles. Yeah. <laughs> that's amazing. I mean, I 
I've heard so many people talk about, you know, from coffee farming to, you know, to roasting to the cup, you know, it's a one way street. How can we serve? And the same thing as you said, how can we serve that customer? But I think this may be the first time that I'm hearing and also thinking and understanding that it's a two way street. And what same thing that what you said is what you put out there and treating them as a person and you know it's it's your job not just to serve coffee but you see it as almost your responsibility to um serve their their well general well-being let's say as well um it's so interesting to see how that comes back to you especially uh you know when you when you need it and i i think it's very heartwarming to uh on the other side of it that you know you're going to compete but at the end of the day it, it feels like you already won something, uh, something much greater than anything you could win in New York. We we already did this, and I and I I said this to everyone, um, and I even like at the coffee masters, uh, I said that having all the people that stood next to us, supporting, helping, we are ultimate winners. If we came last, we are winners because we have these people. But having the trophy and not the people around us, I'm loser. I'm I'm no one. I'm a guy with a trophy, and you can do you cannot do anything with it. You can you can throw it into the bin because it's it's worthless. It doesn't mean anything. Mm-hmm. It means, of course, in the circle of like of coffee. Of, of course, but yes. On on this like human level, uh, what's going on? It it must not even bring pleasure. Yeah. It brings when I was when we were competing because this is the second year we're competing. First year I competed, I came second. So coming first next year was even like more challenging. And when I saw how many people were there achieving for us, I was like, I was speechless. I was speechless. I was like, I don't know where you all came from, but there's at least 50 <laughs> people, um, if if not more that truly want to see us lifting the trophy above my head. And you know, you know mm-hmm. what we then did? We, my, I sent my fiance to buy a bottle of champagne. Once they gave us the trophy, we opened the champagne, poured into, uh-huh. the, into the trophy, and we shared it with people. The, the trophy? Because I wanted oh, to, my to, gosh. to say, guys, thank you. Here's a glass of the winning champagne. Please enjoy it. Like, have a sip. Have, you know. Of course. This is as much as there is exactly, as it is yours, exactly. of course. Yeah, it's and a... last thing I want to add to this, of course, we can carry on talking, but uh, one thing I want to say, uh, in hospitality, there are no customers. Mm-hmm. In hospitality, there are guests. The reason why is that if someone, is, when I was a kid, and someone would come to see us, like come to be visit, mm-hmm. my mom would get the 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 crystal glasses from the shelf that no one would touch she right. would get a, a, mm-hmm. a tea set that no one would touch she would get the the tablecloth that no one would be touching because guests are coming they are our guests we are going to host them and we will do everything we will see on their eyes to make sure they feel welcomed and well looked after and mm-hmm. yeah so this would happen the dinner is over. My mom would spend entire day cooking, cleaning to make sure everything is spotless. And then you read this book from Kakuzo Okakura, the book of tea, which I told you about. And he says, mm-hmm. the master, something like this, the master, the tea master cannot be a person who did not master the art of cleaning the tea room. Out of nowhere, wow. out of nowhere, Words of my mom, I see in book written by a Japanese person who like, yeah. they cannot, they, they cannot, they are from different worlds, but they came to same conclusion, the same conclusion. And my mom would be losing it every single time she would be cleaning and someone would make again mess. She would lose it. Like she would be very, very angry. And then, you know, she would spend, of course, I was cooking, I was cleaning, and then I was doing the dishes, cleaning the dishes, putting everything where it's meant to be. So you cannot tell there was anything. And, you know, and I see this and wow. I'm like, wow, like, why do you do that? And she's like, uh, yeah. we're having guests. And that's why I want to say that in hospitality, there yeah. are only guests. 
Customers are in Tesco. Customers are in Sainsbury's. Customers are in Walmart. In here, we are looking after our guests. But if you want to be treated wow. like a guest, you need to act like a guest. Of course. Of course. Of course, yes. Yeah. So, for example, it's a small thing to say. It's a, it's a very clear definition of what guest is and what mm -hmm. customer is. For some reason, that remains to be the, one of the very difficult things to get people's head around in here. If you come to the place where I worked before, say Savoy, Scarves, uh, Bar at Rosewood, mm -hmm. sorry, it was American Bar at the Savoy, or Quaint by Eric Glorins, in those places, word customer was forbidden. Like you could not use word customer only in relation to you shopping as a customer. That was the only thing you could ever say. If you would, if you would ever say customer, okay. they would crucify mm -hmm. you. Like, and, and not because there's something wrong about saying that, but it's the belief you are unconsciously looking after them as if they are your guests, as if they're in your living room. And if they ask you for more ice, it cannot be problem. And if they ask for one more sugar, it cannot be problem because that's what they want. Mm -hmm. And you're there to not to meet the expectation, to exceed them. That's important. It's the ability to do more yeah. than what they're asking for without them telling you. So if someone comes to cafe and tells me, uh, I'll have third white and a glass of water. I know you will have the glass of water because I will give it to you. You don't have to ask here. You sit down, you oh, sit down okay. and you'll get glass of water because I want you to feel looked after. I know you want that water because it's hot. I, I, am, I have dry throat because I could not drink for the last three hours because we're busy. But for you, I will bring glass of water automatically. You don't have to tell me. And sometimes yeah. I feel guilty if I see that under my watch, someone sat down, got their coffee, and they have no water. Because wow. I tell to my colleagues or to whoever, even to myself, Rusty, you did not see that. You should have seen that. Because you didn't look after the person same way you did after someone else. And if that person will notice, what do you do then? You say, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And what? You're sorry. Sorry is not helping me. And I understand that, you know, it's a, it's a difficult thing. That's why I say hospitality is difficult. Because if you are very strict with yourself and you have very, like, you have the rules set in the stone, there's no way of, like, mm -hmm. uh, shortcuts. Shortcuts do not exist in this industry. And whoever will take shortcuts people will notice right away that, oh, there's something funny. <laughs> That's not how it normally is. Of course, and you know, yeah. even if, for example, someone's waiting for coffee for maybe five minutes, six minutes, seven minutes, if you read that situation and you imagine how would you feel in their shoes, you know that bringing that glass of water will comfort them enough for you to be like, able to say, I apologize, a uh, little bit busy, coffee will be with you as soon as possible. Okay? Okay. Not a yeah. problem. All of a sudden, it's not a problem. But if you didn't tell them, they don't know what's going on. In their mind, they're thinking, they forgot my order, they forgot my order, they forgot my order. Yeah. No, no, no. Mm -hmm. If you bring that water, when you know, you need to communicate these things. Because if you tell them, they are expecting that. They know what is going on. And at the same time, they know you didn't forget about them. They know that you are doing it. Obviously, if you came to say mm -hmm. that you're sorry, uh, it may take one or two more minutes. That's absolutely fine. And it's okay. But if you don't tell them, they don't know what's going on, they will feel like something is up. Uh, I don't, I, exactly, anxious, I don't like right? this. Yeah. Why is this happening? And that's, that's, that's how... These things, that's how powerful these things can be. Such a stupid, I have to say, stupid thing like bringing a glass of water. If someone asks me, the correct, exactly, thing. it doesn't cost anyone anything. Like it's for free for them, for you. Yeah, you have to take a few steps, but that's it. That's it. And you looked after someone, they will be like, oh, they brought me water. They didn't bring me water in the other cafe. I may be coming here instead. Win win. Yeah. You know, that's, oh, that's exactly. That's and then, you know, space. even a thing like topping up the water. 
You know, you will be surprised how many people are like, oh, thank you. And it feels like almost awkward that I came and I refilled that glass of water, asked them for my one more coffee. And all of a sudden, they're like, uh, something's different here. I don't know what, but uh, this place doesn't feel <laughs> like other places feel. Why is that? Well, it's because yeah. of that individual mm-hmm. impact. We as professionals, as human beings are able to generate if we think of it. If we if we truly let ourselves, our, our existence do the things we, we believe in, you know, mm-hmm. we'll bloom. And they will bloom and the cafe will bloom and everyone will be happy. Yes, of course, from time to time, there's a person who's really angry because I don't know what. Of course, that happens. Exactly. There always will happen. But there's also a way of dealing with that, you know. And it's it's not a way of, it's not, it's, the solution is not to be angry at that. The solution is to try to see beyond what happened in the head of the person that they, I don't know, stormed out or, you know, um, made a, a comment on something, for example, you know, it can be mm-hmm. a simple thing, it can be, you know, something very, something that can go easily unnoticed, but <laughs> coincidences do not exist in this world. And especially when dealing with people, because people are, you know, very, very unique. Everyone is is a is an individual. Of course. Uh, and the, the, the way they experience life is not the same way as I do or as my colleague uh, does. And that's very important to 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 take into the um, equation. That was the word I was after. Uh, yes, because yes. without that, I am guessing, and that's one thing that people in hospitality cannot never like cannot do. It's to assume, never assume, because you will you you won't get why first place. Uh, whereas if you ask, if you say. You're not assuming, you know, end of the story. And you would be surprised how many times, for example, I'll give you an example. Someone would come to a bar where I was working, trained by Eddie Gorintz. Busy shift, yeah, busy, busy, busy shift. Uh, Out of nowhere, uh, there was a person who, for example, asked for a glass of ice, uh, like um, icy water, yeah? Uh, And we knew that that person is having ice, for example. Uh, And I would refill their water. And I would not, for example, offer the ice, although I maybe should have known at that time that they want that ice in their water because that's the preferred way of drinking the water, right? Uh, and all of a sudden, someone noticed, and I believe it was it was it was um, Eric, it was my boss, uh, my colleague, and he goes like, uh, "That table doesn't have ice, as they're meant to." And I say, and I say. Uh, uh, well, I assume the, uh, and no, no, Rusty, we don't assume. And you know, he didn't have to say anything else. He made his he made his that point it. that if you if you're not sure, you ask. And if for any reason you are really, 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 really busy, that you cannot do that, you need to find time to do that. Simply. No, yes, I understand. Yes. You know, these places are very demanding. Hospitality is demanding, as I said, and I will always say. Oh, but it's also important that we take notice of that. If I cannot give ice to that person right now, I say, bear with me, I don't know, five, 15, half an hour, maybe, you know, make a little joke about that. You know, that's like yeah, the yeah. part of it. Like, that's what the business is about. Mm-hmm. That, uh, of course, nobody's expecting, nobody will take you seriously if you say that. Uh, it will be half an hour, uh, but you know, you may, you may, you you know, this joke may work with one person. It may not work with another. You need to read that per, the not person, but the situation. And once you are able to do this, nothing stopping you. Like you know, you can be. Yeah. I'm not saying that you will be the best, but you are best to your best knowledge, in the sense that what you're doing, you're doing because you mean it. You are not pretentiously mm-hmm. doing stuff. You do it because you mean it. And that's um, that's very important. Yeah. As I said, it's not tangible. It's something that exists only, I don't know, it's like, uh, it's it's just in the air. It's uh, Yeah, you no, can't, no, you can't no, touch no. it, of course. But it's, 
in my mind, this loops back actually to like the very first story that you talked about for your very first coffee competition, because you, it didn't seem that on the forefront of your mind, you weren't just only like, I want to make, I mean, I know you, of course you were young, but you didn't say, I want to make the best cup of coffee. And that's what you were thinking about. You were thinking about how the judges, how the audience would interact, would enjoy, you know, what you're putting together. And uh, I think that's so, uh, and what you were talking about, the joking with somebody, I always love the, again, Colin Harmon, I love his book, but he was talking about how do you keep people entertained and, you know, not forgotten when, you know, they're waiting on something. And he, he said that his favorite thing would be like point at someone be like, your order will be ready in 45 seconds on the dot. He's like, time it. You know, it's just like, you know, the coffee industry and the coffee shops, people go there and sit down to have a good time. They're not, I mean, those people who think they're just there to, if you're going to sit down and just get a cup of coffee and sit there, drink your coffee in silence and leave without doing anything else. Maybe if you want to relax, read your newspaper, if you want to talk to somebody, but it's not just about that cup of coffee. It's about the experience, the hospitality. And, you know, at the same time, if there's someone in the cafe who wants to read the news and the newspaper mm -hmm. and drink the cup of coffee in silence, if I can do that, I'll do that. Because that's what they're after, right? They yeah. they want to enjoy the coffee. They want to read the, the papers. I will not go there bothering them. Oh, by the way, we have this and this coffee. Uh, how does that sound, huh? And it'd be like, uh, you know, what? You're a bit annoying. Go back behind the bar because I want to read my paper in peace. <laughs> and there's up, you know, there's absolutely mm -hmm. nothing wrong with that. But somehow, not saying that all the time, but I I will be able to sense it from people. What do they want? Do they of want course. this? Do they want that? Do they want me to make a silly joke about mm -hmm. uh, their, their funny T-shirt or something? You know, because you would be surprised, but many times I make comment like, you know what? Your outfit's amazing. And people are like, yeah, thank you, I guess. <laughs> and you know, I'm like, <laughs> well, I, I mean it. I mean, what's 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 the deal like why and you know but but yeah, then you you, you get to you get to know that these things are not maybe common uh in life of these people mm -hmm. right and then you start to you start to see these differences like huge differences between what people are uh you know maybe here and there uh and again as i said you know you'll get to the point where you are psychologist of the of the business you are the you are the, yeah. the the doctor everybody kind of came to see uh and without you you know obviously judging anyone or saying anything that's inappropriate you mm -hmm. see you kind of you happen to see them maybe in better times maybe in worse times uh and you are making sense out of this you are picking on these individual clues and you're trying to mm -hmm. put them together to make some sort of picture uh and, and then and then out of this picture uh you know what you can say you know what you can mention you know what the person maybe wants to be told how they like their coffee to be served mm -hmm. and so on and so forth and you know nowadays some people come they don't even say what they want but they'll get it because because we notice yeah. because we see if someone comes and i know that they were having latte with one sugar in three weeks uh constantly um uh me forgetting they're getting sugar is a bad thing, but that's mm -hmm. that's that's here. That's where I have to be like, uh, Rusty, you did not do well because you didn't see this, and you didn't do well because you didn't do that, and that's not cool. And you need to step up your game. You need to. You cannot kind of rely on you being the best, the greatest, and everyone will come here. Oh, Rusty, make me coffee. <laughs> that's not how it works. Yeah, that's not how it works. Because first, it's them as the guest on the cafe and it states maybe mm -hmm. me occasionally yeah okay fine uh but what i also wanted to say is that this person Stanislav Adena, who wrote the book uh the paparazzi bar book uh, mm -hmm. he's a person who who once said that every single time you come to to bar you come to the place you work you forget everything you know because if you will have already concept in your head how things work, you may lose a clue somewhere. And that clue could have maybe helped you to be better. 
but because you you know you know you think you know you won't mm, consider that clue but maybe you should have yeah and that was very mm-hmm. important thing that, that that i always kind of encourage people to do that you know don't think that there's only one way of doing things there isn't and if there's a better thing from what I do and what you do, and you happen to tell me that, you know what, I think we should do it like this or like that, of course. I mean, let's let's talk about it. Like, uh, I, I will not feel like you are trying to, to underestimate me or, you know, uh, try to prove that, oh, Rusty, you think you're the coffee master, but I, you're not or something. You know what I mean? Again, <laughs> and, and if, and if I course, would have yeah, this yeah. maybe in my mind, that's exactly what I would maybe be tempted to do. But because I, I, you know, this concept is very alien to me, I don't know that. I don't take that into consideration. Someone comes to me, says, Rusty, you know what? Your hair looks terrible. Uh, fine okay i mean <laughs> you know it looks terrible i look into the mirror i said no you know what actually it doesn't look very fine very nice so no fair fair point like if someone comes and says we shouldn't do this we shouldn't do that how about this how about that of course i'm open to anything because i know that mm-hmm. the more i know the less i know in theory right there's so many things i know of that course. i don't know that someone needs to tell me or i need to Come, come up to know somehow. And if it's you telling me on Monday and then you telling me off on Wednesday, be it. Like, there's nothing wrong with that. There's, you know, I, at the end of the yeah, day, yeah. we're making coffee. I mean, come on, we're making coffee. Eh? We, uh, yeah. But there's actually a funny thing. Um, I remember once a colleague of mine, his name's Gabor, mm-hmm. a very good friend of mine from Hungary. He would say, Rusty, we're making cocktails, actually, while we were in Quain. And he's like, Rusty, we're making cocktails. Like, you know, don't don't take yourself personally. That's CVC. Yeah. Because we make cocktails. We're not saving people. But then what once happened was that we, we had a guest who had an egg allergy. And we accidentally served him a dish that had egg in it. Uh, and it was a severe allergy. Um, this person happened to miss the flight. He must have spent the night in hospital. You know, it was very like, it wasn't cool. It wasn't cool. We were not really happy about about that night, but you know, it all got resolved. You know, perfectly fine. Perfect person was happy because we took it very seriously. We really made it very clear that we're sorry that this was unintentional, and you know, no one had means to to do anything like that. And then, and then this this colleague Gabor, we were like once sitting down, and he said, uh, uh, and I told him like, remember when you said that we're not saving people's lives? We're we making cocktails. And he's like, yeah. And I said, but we have the ability to take someone's life. Did you notice that? And he's like, what do you mean? Remember, we almost killed a person here once. And he's like, oh, yeah. And I was like, that's a strong thing to think of. Like, you have the power if you don't take this seriously. Because coincidentally, that person was mocked by his allergy and someone on purpose served him eggs before. Like, would you believe that? Would you believe that someone says, I have egg allergy and someone on purpose gives him a dish with egg in it. And he almost like he was, his life was at risk. And he goes like, uh, the people did this to me before. And I was like, no, you, you're joking. He's like, I'm not joking for real. So, you know, so, wow. you know, and this, wow. this, these, these events made me think of like, of this in a very different light. And uh, what also yeah. one Stanislav said, I won't mention Stanislav again, uh, but, you know, he's a, he's a great person <laughs> when it comes to these things. And he once said that, uh, uh, don't take yourself seriously, mm-hmm. but take seriously what you do. Take your occupation for, for real. Be the, be the real person. People want you to be there. Don't assume, don't guess 100% or nothing. Okay, okay, fair enough. And you know, with with this mindset, I feel like you cannot go wrong because if you if you are very, if you know what you why you there what what the job requires you to do what your beliefs require you to do you will not do otherwise you won't do different. You know, so uh, so. 
and, and, and this, you know, this would apply to anything. Like if someone asks me, for example, to run, a, to do an event with some spirit company or with some brand, and they ask me, oh, you'll be making cocktails. Fine. I'm taking shakers. I'm taking jiggers. I'm taking ice tongs. I'm taking knife. I'm taking chopping board. I'm taking everything I possibly can take. I will iron my shirt. I will iron my trousers. I will make sure that the, the knot on the tie is perfect. I will put wax on my hair mm-hmm. and go. Like everything or nothing. Like uh, I, I could yes. not bear the, the feeling of knowing that there's something I did not pay enough attention to, and I am not going hundred mm-hmm. percent full on. I I could not, and uh, yeah. sometimes that's actually uh, that's obviously one side. But sometimes these things can make you feel anxious. They like they put they put a lot of pressure mm-hmm. on the you, and I I oh, and course. I understand yeah. it's you know that's why again as I said hospitality is demanding it's difficult uh it is exactly for this because uh you may also maybe at point at times become your own victim of what you believe in like it may get that difficult or you may you may like be so serious about it uh they can be harmful to you uh and that's also kind of a stage that i in my opinion everybody has to go through because you see this that's a very common thing in in this industry of of like people burning out simply they put a lot of pressure under them on themselves the place is put a lot of pressure under themselves there's something some inconvenience happening in their life it's difficult to cope with this it's difficult to cope with that as much as we want the hospitality to give to us, we need to be giving back to hospitality. It doesn't work the way that only we benefit, the entire industry to benefit. And when I say entire industry, that means from the, the business owner to the managers, to the um, to staff, to guests, to, uh, to uh, even um, delivery guys. Like, you know, how, come on, how, how badly these people sometimes get treated. You giving them a cup of coffee in the coffee oh, shop, because you see them pedaling uh, from, I don't know, Brixton to Crystal Palace. It's, there's a big, 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 massive steep hill. You see them cycling. Yes, okay, they have electric bikes. But they have like maybe 60 kilos of cargo on that bike. Uh, that cannot go unnoticed. Hey, you want coffee? You want water? Take a seat. Have a break. You know, yeah, yeah. I'll have coffee. Of I'll course, have water. Yeah. You give him everything and person's good to go. You know, and, and it didn't yeah. cost you anything. Uh, and that person feels valued, feels looked after. And, you know, and that's a delivery guy. That's not even the guest. And, you know, you cannot, you cannot fake this. You cannot fake. No, because you cannot. as soon as I, you start, agree. it will smell funny. People notice, people will notice <laughs> very quickly. Uh, mm-hmm. It doesn't cost you anything to be kind. Kindness is free, exactly. Is free. Exactly. And even in relation, if someone does something bad to you, like, you know, you can either take that very seriously and be very, like, uh, annoyed by it, or you can also use mm-hmm. that as a learning tool. You know, yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. you know, what can you now do to make that person stay? How how can you do that? think of something quickly, 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 you know, while they're still here, when they're gone, you can't do that anymore. Tomorrow will be a different day. There is this saying, uh, and it, it applies to again to Japanese tea ceremony. It's called ichigo ichie. That means one chance to encounter to to uh, how is it? It's a uh, it's one chance, one opportunity to treasure the encounter. It's only the the conversation we're having will only be unique now, here and now. It won't it won't happen tomorrow. It would not happen yesterday because tomorrow is another day. Tomorrow we may die. We don't know what will happen. So we give it everything we can in the in the interaction we're having. Uh, because there's only one one interaction like that. There won't be a different one. Uh, tomorrow is a different day. Tomorrow is a completely different set of things that happen. That they will, you know. Uh you can't go wrong with this, like I don't know, it's it's like it's bulletproof. It's uh it's difficult yet beautiful, and it's uh, it's very it's I don't know it's it's a thing you cannot be told. It's something that you you observe, you notice, 
uh, and you make it your own. You add your own essence to it, you know. Uh, and what I, what I, for example, would like to experience one day is that there will be someone I will teach something, and I will at some point realize that this person is better than I am, and that's the goal. That's the goal that then this person will take all that knowledge I gave him, mm -hmm. turns it into theirs, and then pass it on to someone else. You know? Wow. That's that's so admirable. I mean, I, that's, I agree, though. That's, that's all what it's about, right? Is the day that you see that, that potential for it to go forward, and not only for you to teach, but to learn and get excited. I mean, that's, that's what makes the job that you do, I think, and the experience in the world that you're in so much fun. I'm going to say, <laughs> Rosti, thank you so much for being thank on you. today. My I mean, pleasure. My pleasure. The, the, I think, and I would also like to say the things that we talked about aren't necessarily the easiest things to talk about, right? We talked about real things, things that happen every day. And I just have to say I have the utmost respect for you. I mean, the way you kind of go about your work, the idea of hospitality and without, you know, the room uh, for ego in there is, is a very exciting thing to see. Um, so um, thank you so much for you, being on Thank you for today. having me. Uh, thank you for having me. Really. It was, you know, my pleasure. And I, I, I hope that someone who will listen to this, if it's meant to be only one person, they will benefit from this. Mm -hmm. That's already a success. And, um, you know, keep up the good work. You, um, you know, you are clearly passionate about what you're doing. So, uh, um, <laughs> you know, thank you. I, I, I am only, I am, I am hoping that you know the only the audience that you will you will eventually approach will be will be huge and will be growing by by large numbers because uh, you know I'm sure that there will be some very interesting guests uh, with the uh, with the more episodes to come uh, and you know as I said oh, yeah. uh, if 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 your work is meant to help one person you're the winner right same mm -hmm. same same with me if, if one person is meant to listen to this. That will take something away from it. Perfect. Job done. Job done. Absolutely. That's that's a great that's a great point to end on. And I thank you everyone for for listening. And I know I speak for everyone out there when I say good luck um, in New York. We're all really thank you. We'll, we're excited we'll, to have you on this side of the we'll, world. We'll, we'll keep you updated <laughs> for sure. We'll keep you updated. Absolutely. All right. Thank you very much for everyone for listening. And we'll see you next time on From Cup to Coffee. You all have a great day.